What's up YouTube, but welcome to today's video. Brian Noonan here. Today I've got uh, some important updates and announcements I want to make. Uh, first of all, next Thursday, January 14th, this coming Thursday, you're probably watching this video on Tuesday or Wednesday, but January 14th, Thursday, I'm gonna be doing a YouTube Live right here on my YouTube channel. I'll also live stream it on Facebook. So whether you're on Facebook that day, whether you're on YouTube and want to join, uh, come and join me and uh, link up on that live. I love doing these lives. I'm able to answer so many of your guys' questions. I get to interact with you and uh, really provide additional value and, and help you with whatever you're struggling with. So make sure if you do catch this video and you're watching it here on the channel in time before January 14th, uh, 2021, make sure to uh, come and join. And uh, I'll be happy to answer your questions, help you with whatever you're struggling with. Today's video, I want to share with you what I'm doing to prepare for launching my products in 2021, uh, how I'm finding my products, validating the products, and sort of some new strategies I'm using to make sure that my money and investments are spent wisely. You know, when it comes time to invest into a product, we're usually spending two to $5,000 to launch a new private label product. So today I'll share exactly what I'm doing and how I'm doing it, uh, finding products, validating it's a good product, and spending your money and my money wisely. I'll help you with that. Welcome to the channel if you're new and welcome back to those of you who are my subscribers. Thank you for joining me back. My name is Brian Noonan. I'm a full-time Amazon FBA seller and mentor, business coach, and right here on this channel I release one to two new videos every single week covering everything Amazon FBA, business, e-commerce. So if you enjoy that type of content, please do me a favor right now, go on down and press subscribe, um, like the video, leave a comment, and you'll be automatically entered to win a 30-minute coaching call with me. Okay, guys, without any other delays, let's go ahead and jump inside my computer so I can share with you these new strategies for 2021, finding, picking products, coming up right now. All right, guys, welcome inside my computer. Let's jump into it. So the two main uh, product research methods are a couple of the best ones that I've been using lately and finding uh, a lot of success with, picking products, helping my mentorship students find products is the uh, Helium 10 Black Box Keywords tab with some new advanced filters and the product, uh, product research kind of rabbit hole but more storefront method, those two methods as, uh, as well. And I'll show you how to use those as well as Etsy and Pinterest to get ahead of trends. Um, you know, usually on Etsy and Pinterest, if you run your product idea through those sites, you're able to get ahead of what's about to come to Amazon. And so I'll show you how to do that in today's video. Um, before we get started, I want to just thank uh, my sister for this super nice new microphone she got me for um, Christmas and Hanukkah. Uh, hopefully the sound quality is uh, super good. Uh, I just had usually an older microphone that clipped onto, clipped onto my shirt, but now I have like an official uh, podcast microphone, so the sound quality uh, should be much better. Okay, guys, when we're, when we're looking for products, uh, we're inside Helium 10 Black Box. If you guys don't have Helium 10, it is the best product research software uh, and tool. It comes with everything you need. You don't need any other tools or paid memberships. Uh, to start your Amazon business, to start selling, you know, for, for inventory control, for profit keeping, it has it all. So there's a link down below for the Helium 10. I recommend getting the Platinum plan. It'll be just uh, $48 for month one of the Platinum plan. It comes with the Freedom Ticket, uh, full training course, all of the tools and resources uh, that you need. So check that out down below. I'm inside Black Box, which is just uh, Helium 10. You go over here on the left, and then it's Black Box Product Research. Now, a lot of new sellers go for the Products tab, which is okay, except for the reason I like the Keywords tab better. The Keywords tab will bring up a whole category or a whole niche of opportunity. Uh, instead of just product by product by product, you have to go like one at a time and then open that product up on Amazon, then look at how it's doing, then get the main keyword from the title of that one product, then open that up, and then run X-Ray. Whereas with Helium 10 Keywords tab, it brings up a whole category. Here's the filters I'm using. Search volume, minimum 2,000. Monthly revenue, minimum 4,966. Just kind of a random number there. Price. You know, a lot of new Amazon sellers make the mistake of trying to sell a $12 to $25, $12 to $30 product. And yes, you can make money with that priced product. 
um, except for they quickly become saturated in most cases. You know, every Amazon seller wants to start with $1,000. So uh, I'll talk about in today's video kind of what you'll need to do to be successful in 2021. That one of the first things I want to tell you is to build a moat, a wall, a fence, a border, uh, a protection around you. Uh, the first thing is when we go down here and start looking through products, you know, thousands of other sellers, even with these advanced filters I'll show you, there's thousands of other sellers that have Helium 10 that are seeing these products too. So that's something we have to take into consideration. Now I've sold products that I found in Black Box and they do very well for a while. You know, every product will have a life shell, uh, a shelf life of one to two years, it'll sell well. In most cases, as long as it's not seasonal or super trendy. But just take that into account. Uh, whatever product you decide on for your first product, for your second product, for starting your Amazon business, we have to do something to stand out, whether we add value, we bundle it with something else, we differentiate it, which means making it different and better, we customize it, we improve it or solve a problem. Uh, and maybe it's a lighting product, like a moon lamp, and you decide to get approval. It's considered a lighting product, but you can get approval. Automatically, that cuts out like 95% of other sellers who won't go through the process of getting approval. So any extra protection of border, fence, moat you can put around, your Amazon business the better. And one of the most basic things to start with is the price. I personally don't sell products that sell for less than $50. Um, you know, with the $200, 200 unit limit, you could still launch, you know, let's say the product sells on Amazon for $77, $75. That means it's probably gonna cost from Alibaba to source around eight to $12. So let's say it's $10. Uh, you buy 200 that's $2,000. You send the 200 to Amazon for DDP shipping, it's another 1,000. So you're $3,000 in to launch that product. So it's absolutely, if you can go higher in price, try to go higher in price. Review count max, 233. Uh, here's the categories, guys, I recommend. Uh, these categories in 2020 blew up and uh, the sales are doing really, really well. And these are the categories that have made me the most money selling on Amazon, which are arts, crafts, and sewing, beauty and personal care, uh, health and house, or sorry, home and kitchen, industrial and scientific, kitchen and dining, patio, lawn and garden, sports and outdoors, tools and home improvement. If I had to pick my top three, it would be tools, home improvement, patio lawn and garden since spring and summer is coming and home and kitchen uh, and then arts crafts and sewing industrial and sports and outdoors would be my second best set of top three okay so these categories the ones i recommend the other ones guys automotive is restricted appliances are too large baby i'm personally biased against because my first product was in baby and it was a hard sell uh, I find it very competitive. Books, cameras, uh, photos, cell phones and accessories, clothing, coins, computers, all too competitive for me. Electronics. Electronics are okay, guys, um, but for your first product, I wouldn't recommend it just because uh, it's an electrical product. It may require approval, um, but more importantly than that, the reason for the first product not to be electronics is a high return rate, defective rate, or customers don't know how to use it, and so you get a lot of returns. But uh, again, absolutely, there's no problem selling electronics. You're welcome to look in that category. Uh, uh, handmade products is a very small uh, category. Your product usually needs to be a very small batch handmade item for handmade, like uh, your handmaking jewelry, your handmaking t-shirts or soaps then you would qualify for handmade, but it's a much smaller market. It's separate from all the other products on Amazon. Uh, grocery and gourmet food is restricted. Health and household, there's a lot of cleaning products in there that require approval, toilet paper, paper towels, diapers, that kind of stuff. Uh, but you can look in there too. Movies, office, musical, too large or too competitive. Pet supplies I find to be too competitive. Toys and games is okay. Uh, there's some good outdoor summer toys and games product like large unicorn blow up sprinkle uh, sprinklers uh, for the backyard, you know, pool games. So to toys and games would actually be a good category to look into. Um, I'll leave it out for this one just because I, I tend to get a lot of results for toys and games. And uh, I just want to focus on the other categories. And let's talk about that. You don't have to choose all these categories at once. You could do like home and kitchen and kitchen and dining as one search and then come back and do sports and outdoors and patio as one search. So that's an option too as well. Minim number of other sellers, I do a max of 1,000. Uh, exclude keywords, masks, sanitizer, towels, pillows, rugs. 
these types of products just make really hard uh, private label products, okay? Uh, shipping to your size, small standard, large standard, small oversize is all okay with me. Uh, monthly sales units minimum, 200. Uh, competitor revenue, these are the two most important filters on this whole thing. More than $5,000 in revenue for four, minimum of four of the competitors doing over 5,000 in revenue. Competitor reviews, less than 150, four or more. Best sellers rank, okay, BSR. Amazon assigns a rank. After the product starts selling, you'll get a rank from Amazon. The lower the better, think first place, second place, third place, the lower the better. So I look for products that have an average BSR of 75,000 or less. Competing products, I do a max 1,000 here and number of other sellers max 1,000 here. And then I'm just gonna press search, guys. And we can come down here and start to go through these products. Now again, uh, remember that uh, we're looking for a product that we can differentiate, stand out, improve, um, and take into account and be thinking, you know, there's thousands of other sellers that are seeing these products. So I'll show you what to do next. If these products don't look good, where you go next. But, you know, like selling black aprons or selling butcher paper, it's very hard to private label those products because I can't really improve or make better uh, butcher paper, office pens, you know, paper, uh, printer paper, uh, you know, ice melt. There's not much I can do with private labeling or making it better. Yarn, the same thing. It's just yarn. Uh, Billard Q racks. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, the first thing I look at is the name of the product here. The search volume, 2,300 people per month are searching for this product. The average price is good, $71. It's making an average of 288 sales per month. And monthly revenue is 15,000 a month with 206 reviews. That's actually pretty good. Uh, and so we'll click on this little dots in the circle, view on Amazon. And uh, we'll open this up. Now the first thing I look at when I open up a product under our keyword search term under all departments is this number right here in the top left. You see this 302 results? You can pretty much take half of that number and that's about how many other sellers there are on Amazon. So 302 results, take it to half, about 150 other sellers, that's very low. I like 1,000 total results or less. And then you're just going to come up and run uh, your Helium 10 X-Ray Chrome extension, uh, X-Ray product research extension, and we'll let this load. Now, I can pretty much tell if it's a good product or not just by looking at X-Ray, this data here. So this data that loads is super important, guys. I can uh, pretty much tell if it's a good product or not just by looking at all this information right here. This tells us all of the sellers selling this product, what's their brand name, what's the price they're selling it at, how long have they been selling, how much money are they making per month, how many sales or products are they selling per month, what's the FBA fee, we pay Amazon, um, how many reviews do these sellers have, what's the size and weight of the product, the tier size, how many images do they have, um, all of this is 30 day estimates, all of this information here, prices, sales, revenues, it's all 30 day estimates except for the review count. That's lifetime or forever since they launched the product. So we're looking for a review count like five or more on page one here in the top of the results and never sort this data because these are the sellers you're gonna have to go against once you do start selling the product. You're gonna have to sell more than these sellers to get to page one. Okay, so this goes off whoever made the most sales yesterday or with the last within the last hour or 12 hours. So this changes every day. Ne tomorrow, this seller could be up here, this seller could be down here. It goes off sales velocity and BSR. Um, revenue, or review count. We can only get about 10 to 20 reviews per 100, 150 sales. So if you sell 200 units or 200 products month one, you're only gonna get about 10 to 20 reviews. That's the average. And so that's why when you're doing product research, I like to see a minimum five or more in the top spots here with 200 reviews or less. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we definitely have five or more 200 reviews or less. 
that means these seller, this seller Reese and product recently launched. It's already making over 5,000 in revenue. Same thing here, 70 reviews doing 11,500. Uh, nine reviews doing 1,100 is also good. So revenue, are most of them doing $5,000 or more? Yes, actually almost all of them except for one or two, that's a sponsored, almost all of them are doing $10,000 or more in revenue. Are most of them making around 200 sales or more per month? Uh, yes, it's a higher price product selling an average of $75 to $100. So you wouldn't need to sell 1,000 sales per month. You only need to sell two to 600 a month. Does that make sense? So if it's a higher priced product, usually we have a larger profit margin every time we sell one product. Instead of making five bucks per sale, we're making 40, 50, 60 dollars in profit per sale. Um, I have a student, Lacey, who recently launched her first product. Uh, she did a very, very excellent job. I helped her find the product and she just launched back uh, before December of 2020 and she made $9,000 in profit in one day with one product a few days before Christmas. And that's because she has 40 to $60 profit every sale and she sold about 50 or 60 of her products in one day. That equaled $9,000 in profit in one day and she's gonna be paid out this last week like $28,000 is her seller account balance. She showed me she's getting paid out by Amazon. So some other factors I like to look at here, guys. Over on the right, there's one problem with this product that I noticed. First of all, uh, the average BSR is 230,000. That could tell us there's not enough demand, but more important than average BSR is the revenue and the review count. So this, this column and this column are the most important. Revenue and review counts are more important than this number up here, 75,000 or less for average BSR. But there is one problem uh, with this product, uh, the size tier. Do you see how most all of these are small oversized? There's only one that's standard, large standard. If it was more like half and half, I would still consider it. But because all of these are about 10 pounds and heavier, you're probably gonna pay like 20 bucks for this thing, 20, 25 dollars to source it, and then another five to 10 dollars per product for shipping and packaging and, and freight, uh, freight costs. And so you would have to check profit margin again, but it'd be heavy, it'd be expensive to ship. You can see what the FBA fees are, uh, the difference. So this one is paying $7 every time they sell one of these. This seller that's oversized is paying $26 in fees every time they sell one. So a huge difference. Uh, so I would skip this product just due to the size and weight. Uh, next one guys and don't sell this product lock pick set with practice lock this is actually a not a patented product it's a restricted product I believe this is a restricted product uh, because it has to do with like breaking in things I would stay clear of it I think I saw there are some restrictions on this product I don't remember what it was restricted for um, but it was restricted by Amazon I believe let's keep going shelf brackets 10 inch it's in tools and home improvement. I like that category. The search volume is 3,800. That's good. The average price is 28. The monthly revenue is 8,000. The average reviews is 173. So I'll click view on Amazon. I will run a 675 results. That's under 1,000. That's good. We'll run x-ray. Now the only problem with this product is it's brackets. It kind of goes back to my first point, which is we have to differentiate, solve a problem, add value, build a moat or fence or a border wall around us. How do we do that with brackets? It's going to be very, very hard to stand out with brackets. And so while it may be a good product, and I'll, I'll look into it more, and you can as well, uh, it's going to be hard to, I mean, they're just black brackets. It's going to be very hard to stand out. Uh, and just a lower price or just a better main image is usually not enough to uh, get you ranked to page one. Uh, remember, we're going up against some big brands that have thousands and thousands or hundreds of reviews. They can quickly lower their price down to meet yours and take you out. And so uh, brackets would be hard. But let's look at a good product. So here is a product. Okay, let me show you the, the storefront method. This kind of goes right into my next uh, favorite product research method, which is the storefront method. 
So we can see here this FBA seller is making $21,000 a month. There's a good chance they know what they're doing if they're making 20 grand per month. And so I'm gonna click on their ASIN. I'm gonna open up their listing and then I'm gonna click on their brand name and I'm gonna open up their storefront or see all the products this seller, FBA seller is selling. Why not let them launch the products, see how they do, and then you can replicate whatever is working or is successful. So just going through their storefront here, I see a lot of uh, Christmas tree stands, shelving, shelving, shelving. But since this isn't brand registered, there's no website uh, brand logo at the top here. They don't have brand registry. If, so in this case, we're able to run X-Ray right on their storefront. If you saw a brand logo, kind of look, it looks like a mini website or a website, that means they have A-plus content or enhanced brand content, and you're not able to run X-Ray on their storefront, but you can still get ideas for products and then go under the Amazon search bar, all departments, search in that product name or keyword, and then run X-Ray. But here's that brand, guys, as uh, Easy Decor. It's actually not a bad brand name, Easy Decor. They're selling a lot of floating shelf brackets, but when you open up the seller's storefront, we're only looking for two things. Low reviews means they recently launched. High revenue, it's taking off. So I don't see anything other than this one, 119 reviews doing 25,000 is very good. 65 reviews doing 1,600 is not very good. That many reviews, 65, it should be doing oh, you know, almost 10,000 a month and it's not. Um, so I'm not seeing anything that's standing out so far. I was thinking that that kind of king bed um, corners canopy was interesting. So that was the only one that stood out to me, this thing here, uh, like a canopy netting that goes around a bed. Uh, so we'll open up this product. I didn't see anything in their storefront that was high revenue, low reviews, except for this thing looked interesting. So I will open this up and then I'll grab the main keyword and then I'll do a search up in the search bar under all departments and then I will run X-Ray. Now let's say that, that product, this product is good. The next step is you need to validate that there's enough um, search volume for the main keywords and that you're looking at the right keywords. So I'm gonna take in bed curtain, copy that keyword. I'm going to come into Helium 10 keyword research and I'm gonna go to Cerebro. You can use Magnet, but for this one I'll go to uh, Cerebro and let's copy their ASIN. Now their ASIN is either up here in the web address every time, their ASIN is right here, uh, and it's always down below this main image right here, ASIN's right here. This graph here, guys, is also uh, very valuable to look at. Uh, this sales graph here, once it loads, you can actually um, see how the product's been selling. Is the product seasonal? Has the seller ran out of stock? What's the price point they've been selling at? Um, and so that sales graph that loads below the main image can give you a lot of good information. Same thing with this blue sales graph right here. You click all time at the top and you're able to see how many products this seller was, how many products this seller was selling per day since they launched. So they're moving two units a day, five, 10, 17, 20, uh, seven, 12, 11 units per day, uh, right here before Christmas, uh, 23, 30, 30 sales a day, 23 sales a day. Now they're down to only five sales per day. And then on the listing itself, this uh, sales graph, if you click all time, you want to see it just like this. This red line starts high, BSR, comes down and stays down below 100,000. That would tell me that it's not seasonal and there, there's good demand for the product. Now these spikes right here, uh, the blue line ends, that means they ran out of stock. Okay, so uh, if the red line goes up in winter and down in summer, where this red line goes up, it's not selling. So keep that in mind. So uh, I, I copied that ASIN. Let's go into Cerebro 
Let's paste that ace in and then get keywords. Keywords are important for a couple of main reasons. We need to make sure there's enough demand for the product. So I like to see that the top three keywords all have at least two or 3,000 search volume per month or higher. So I know that there's enough people searching the product and that I know that there's multiple low competition keywords but still good search volume that when I start selling the product, I can rank for. Does that make sense? So I copied and pasted a couple or one or two of the main competitors key, uh, ASIN into Cerebro. I come down and click search volume to sort it high to low. And then let's take a look at these keywords. So bed canopy, uh, canopy bed curtains has 52,000 searches a month, uh, 49,000 searches per month. Uh, bed tent has 26,000 searches per month and the competing products I like 2,000 or less okay most of these are around 2,000 or less and then for CPR number the lower the better we won't go into CPR giveaways or search find buy purchases in this video but I can absolutely make a video covering launching and using the search find buy method Maldives honeymoon period uh, on another video but so far guys uh, this product is looking very good now the only thing I didn't let load was all of the sellers selling this product I don't know if I did a search on that but obviously that's the first step is you want to go into Amazon all departments and what's the main keyword for this product um, or actually you can come back into Cerebro and let's see canopy bed curtains click on this little square with the arrow if you're unsure if it's a relevant keyword or not, whether you should use it in your listing, open it up and you want to see it's mostly your product, the same product you're selling. That means it's a relevant keyword. So let's run x-ray on this and we need to take a look. Obviously this is step one after, or step two, product research. Step one, get the product idea. You can use Etsy, Pinterest, Black Box, uh, products you've recently uh, bought. Amazon storefront method, rabbit hole method, best sellers list. That's step one. Get the product idea. And then step two, uh, enter that keyword or uh, search term or product name in the search bar under all departments. Open it up and then run x-ray uh, Chrome extension and take a look at these numbers here. This is going to be the most important factor. Revenues, review counts, price size and weight, seller type. We don't want too many AMZ to go against. And there's a variety of brands, not one or two brands dominating, are gonna be the most important factors for determining, is this a viable product? Search volume, 52,000 people a month want this product, searching for it. However, the review counts are very competitive here, guys. You can see that the majority of these sellers have over 200 reviews. So it would be very hard to get to page one uh, with this product unless you came to market with like such a different and better uh, bed curtain, like a new model, or you just have like the best one, or it comes with something uh, like that. And this one's all dark. Like if you can find a niche within a niche, that's even better. Wow, this one is spectacular. This is the best one on page one, this Natty Four Corners. You can see it has lights inside of it. It's got a beautiful bed. It's tied very, very nicely uh, and, and really, really stands out versus like this one does not look as good. So I'm sure that the revenues would reflect that. Uh, this one would be making more. It obviously is selling for a higher price and has uh, really good reviews as well. Another good one here, it's higher price. Another good one here. So uh, this product, I would still consider, uh, but it is a little bit on that uh, too competitive uh, side. You could go onto Etsy and type in bed canopy. Etsy and Pinterest will show you kind of trends or decor items or products uh, on Etsy that are ahead of the trends because there's handmade artisans that are, are making this product by hand in most cases on Etsy. And you can see colors or designs or patterns or different um, styles that uh, that are not on Amazon yet that you could potentially you know sell bundle if you see similar items that customers are buying it has a lot of reviews like this one um, or get ideas on what's the next most popular design color style for this product so guys those are some of the ways that I'm going about finding products validating it's a good product 
doing the keyword research to make sure that there's good demand for the product and several other keywords I can rank for. And uh, then the last thing I'll say is about the listings themselves. You want to make sure not only that they have low reviews, uh, you know, low reviews so you can rank to page one, but it's also important to take a look at the listing quality or their review rating and then their evaluation score. So let's take a look at the review uh, rating. The review rating on most of these is 4, 4, 4, 4.5, 4.5, 4.5. There's only one with 3.5. I would like a few more here to have 3 or 3.5. That tells me that the listings are not very good. The products are not very good. And there's room to differentiate, improve uh, the product. And then the last thing, guys, listing creation date. You don't want to see like almost all of these created in the last or launched in the last six months. You want like this, 2018, 2017, 2018. And then if the other ones were 2020, 2020, that'd be fine. Uh, and that would be my last tip, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It, we're coming up on just about 30 minutes for a great video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for lots more in-depth research tutorial tips uh, on launching, selling the best products in 2021. Thank you guys so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, I'll see you on the next video. And make sure to come in on Thursday, January 14th, 4 p.m. 4 p.m. West Coast time for a YouTube and Facebook Live. I'll see you then, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.